He's an asphalt driver from the Midwest who made it to the Sprint Cup Series. She's a former Miss Motorsports who's the daughter of a Sprint Car driver from Pennsylvania. Somehow they make it work. Time for Sling and Dirt, presented by Hercules Tire. Here are David and Ashley Strimmy. Good afternoon, Sling and Dirt listeners. They they keep showing us new openings, and it's kind of cool when you come across them. It, it makes you think about what you've actually done and where we've been and where we've got to and now where we are today. They make it work. That's exactly <laughs> what you're right. We start Some out days. Sling and Dirt at each other today. But uh, we're so glad you've tuned in for another episode of Sling and Dirt today on Tuesdays right after Wing Nation and Sling and Dirt is presented by Hercules Tires and we have a great show on tap for you today. First joining us is our good friend Kenny the Herminator Wallace. He'll chat about everything that he's been up to these last few months. He's been racing pretty much all over the country. Uh, We have Terry Phillips joining us. He picks up a Spring Nationals win at Beatrice Speedway this weekend and a heck of a show on Saturday night, although he didn't win it, but he ended up still pulling off a podium finish. And Anthony Prego, he was the Melvin Joseph Memorial winner at Georgetown this weekend. It's the biggest win of his career. He is the Mexican Missile. So we've got a great show on tap for you. We're the Stremmies. I'm Ashley. This is my wonderful husband, David, as always, sitting next to me here. We we come up with some good stuff and some great yep. times. But uh a couple of things we need to touch base on to get started with the show are not things that we enjoy to talk about, uh, but we do want to pay our respects and talk about Grant Younghens. Um, he passed away this weekend. He's been battling cancer for about six years now, um, and unfortunately, he succumbed to that. And 27 years old, uh, has, we've gotten to know Chase really well this this last year, and uh Great family. They love racing, and it's just... Our hearts are with them. Yeah, absolutely. He was the uh, 2009 USMTS Rookie of the Year. Won a big race last year, USMTS race. Um, You know, obviously, we had him on the show. Uh, Like you said, I know Chase. And and then uh, a couple of our customers know Grant. Actually, was texting with him Friday. Mm -hmm. And uh, he just... um, He he was a fighter, you know, six years. It's It's a... that was a, a really big battle, so um, he'll be missed in the racing world. And, and it's interesting, uh, uh, a couple of my friends had said, hey, he had a couple of requests yes. before he uh, he passed away. And, and one will be a race. Um, and I'm, a I'm, memorial I won't say, race. Yeah, memorial race, mm-hmm. but I won't say how uh, the um, structure is going to be because that's one of the cool things that he had kind of requested. So we'll It kind of shows that. the type of character that he was and, and how lighthearted yep. he always had things going. But uh so our face, our our face, our thoughts and prayers are with the family and um, another family as well that is close to us. Roy Pouch, um, he passed away as well last week, um, eighty five years old. He is the patriarch of the Pouch family um, to Billy and Billy Pouch Jr. So uh, our hearts and thoughts are with the families as they deal with the the tough times ahead. Yeah. But uh, we're, we're world. great for grateful for having them in the in the racing world for sure. Yeah. But, um, How about uh, you know, they had a a, a couple of no surprise winners. Bronson won at All Tech Speedway in Florida. Uh, what was interesting about that? I followed a, a tweet. David Rudiman obviously is from that area. They had uh, All Tech went out for their they call them A mods, which was like a UMP mod. Fifteen hundred to win. They only had like seven eight cars show up. And really. Rudiman called them out and said, "Hey guys, here's a track. Trying to." Uh, support your modifieds, everything else, go down there. So hats off to the guys that did go and to the racetrack, and hopefully more people will support them um, because modifieds in that area is really cool to see them grow. They have Lake City, a lot of other tracks down there, Bubba, of course, East Bay. So hopefully they can keep that going. And then obviously uh, Rodney Sanders added another win to his belt up at uh, Red River Speedway. Um, it was interesting right before the big USMTS race this weekend up at uh, Humboldt, So, mm-hmm. or excuse me, in two weeks. In Humboldt, so uh, no, it's this weekend, I think, isn't it? The eleventh. I think Kings of America is uh, King of America is next weekend. Okay, I'll have to look here on break, but uh, anyways, they had uh, you know they were getting ready. Ricky Thornton. Yes, was, well, I was about to say Jake Gallardo. Yeah, he picked up. He swept the weekend at Southern New Mexico Speedway. Um, we had him on the show a couple of weeks ago, but unfortunately, on the second night, he was disqualified, uh, and the deck all of a sudden got higher. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, he was slightly yeah. 
Anyhow, he was disqualified the second night, and uh, Ricky Thornton, who we had on the show last week, he ended up with the the win there. How about he won and then drove all night to get to Iowa, which he, he said he was going. So yes, he got the big win there, and 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 Ricky and uh, he he had done a phenomenal job uh, coming through the field. He had started like 14th or something. Uh, it, it was really, really good race, and Stormy and Johnny finished second in, I think, fourth, somewhere in there on Friday. Yes. No, but second and third, and second then and third. fourth and sixth. Yeah, they didn't Saturday. catch up with track yeah. conditions, but anyway, so uh, that was that was quite the uh, the racing out there. Um, some other winners this weekend. Andy Haas picked up the first opening night at Port Royal Speedway. Um, Bloomquist at Smoky Mountain. Ross Bales at Carolina, and Chris Madden at Dixie Speedway. He picked up, I think he's three for the last three that he's been in. Chris Madden, though, ended up, his weekend didn't start out going to Dixie. He was at Smoky Mountain, and just, I, I, I haven't talked to either side, just what I had gathered from people oh, being here there. Oh, here comes the rumor mill. So, uh, uh, what I had read, like you folks, and, and then what I'd put together from talking to some other people, Madden and Cody Mallory, Mallory is Bloomquist crew chief, uh, I guess, uh, Madden had some big runs on Bloomer in the heat race, and maybe he felt there's blocking. I, I, I don't know. But uh, they finish the race 1-2. They go to the scales. They take the top four to the scales and ends up, I guess, Cody he swerved, done something on his dirt bike. I don't know. But uh, he was ejected from it uh, for after being oh, hit. gracious. So, uh, anyways, they ended up going. Ray Cook and his folks said, hey, uh, Chris Madden, you're going to be asked to leave and not participate in the rest of the weekend. So, he ended up at Dixie, won there. But there's always two sides to every story. I don't know. I do know this. As a driver, you do get frustrated. Uh, and, and some of these people do not pay attention in the pit area. But, obviously, something had happened there. But well, Bloomquist, wasn't there some drama between Bloomquist and Weaver as well this weekend? Nah, they had a hard race, and I mean, they okay. were, you know, was... it was the highlights I had seen. They're hard racing through traffic. It was a heck of a show. Uh, the interesting thing is Jimmy Owens and, and uh, Bloomquist and them all uh, go there, or not Bloomquist, but, but Weaver and, and Owens go there and test quite a bit. So Owens had another brand new Barry Wright car, uh, but Bloomquist and Weaver were, were definitely the, the top of the show and put on a heck of a show there. Well, speaking of being the show, our next guest, Kenny Wallace, joins us here on Sling and Dirt on MRN, presented by Hercules Tires. Sling and Dirt returns in one minute on MRN.com. Sign up to become an O'Reilly O Rewards member today and start earning instantly. O Rewards members earn $5 back for every $150 they spend, so if you haven't become a member yet, what are you waiting for? It's fast, easy, and free. O Rewards, it's your road to exclusive offers only at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. See store for details. O, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Need to sell your used vocational and highway equipment, regardless of type and condition? Then Housby is your single source to manage all aspects of the sales process. We can sell your equipment immediately during one of our twice-monthly auctions, either from where it sits or from one of our nationwide sales locations. You make the choice. Housby has buyers who are looking for what you have to sell and will pay you 10 days after the sale, period. Nothing to sell but looking to buy? Check out what we have today at Housby.com. Hi, I'm Marty Huff. Join me and 10-time NHRA national event winner Doug Herbert for one hour of horsepower Thursdays at noon on the straight line. We'll talk to the biggest names in NHRA drag racing and keep you up to date with news from the pits, tracks, and shops across the country. Join us Thursdays at noon for the straight line, streaming live on the MRN app, the Motor Racing Network's YouTube channel, and on MRN.com. This is Slingin' Dirt on MRN.com. Now back to Ashley and David Stremme. Welcome back to Slingin' Dirt. You're listening to us, presented by Hercules Tires. Joining us now, he's the craziest creature in dirt track racing, but we love him. It's the Herminator, Kenny Wallace. Welcome back to the show, Kenny. I am excited to be on the show. It makes me so happy that you and David are, are doing good things for dirt racing. 
Well, we appreciate that, Kenny, and you're always doing great things with dirt racing, and that's what I love to talk to you about. We always talk about the gamut of things when we talk, but I always love to hear you talk about the state of dirt track racing. You've been to Florida this year. You were out in Vegas a couple weeks ago. How is 2016 shaping up for dirt racing around the country? Well, it's going good for me so far. Thanks to your husband, David Stremme, we got a a new lethal car. And, uh, you know, we went to Speed Weeks. Of course, David was upset with me that I didn't win and dominate. (laughs) And I was upset, too. But, you know, one thing Dick Trickle taught me is we race. And, uh, you know, we got really good the last night. And uh, you know what happens is you spend so long down in Speed Weeks, you have to be patient. I learned this from Bloomquist. I learned it from Moyer. You know, you you want to win everything, but you have to take it as if you're really getting ready for the year also because everybody's evolving, everybody's testing, everybody's trying to find something to kick everybody's butt with, you know, once racing season starts, you know, in the Midwest. So I was really happy with my lethal. We learned a lot about it, and we were second best. You know, um, we got outrun a little bit, but but we finished second. And uh, so that – that's been going really good for me. Uh, and then on the other end, I have a fun team, and I call it my West Coast team, is that uh, the, Sunny Wall, is Wall that the, Traction out on the West Coast. So we're doing a lot of IMCA racing out there also. That's with the, I call it your dream team, because it, it, that's with a dream <laughs> chassis, isn't it? Yeah, it's called a dream yep. chassis, David. And I the s- shop is right behind the main grandstands, right there at the, the Las Vegas cup track that's a very big commercial uh area with big buildings and uh they're really they're really fun people and and that whole imca deal is a complete different you know world you know uh crate motors and smaller tires and so i'm having a good time doing that i have i have two things um one i want you to answer how because in the imca world they took away this little two inch spoiler uh to the big big cars big open motor cars uh how that was coming along but the other thing is, is talk about that cool paint scheme they had on your car. That was, I know a lot of people follow you on Twitter, it was phenomenal. It looks so beautiful I, that I'm trying to vote it, and I told Billy this this morning when I talked to your uh, crew chief there, I was like, hey, has he ordered a wrap yet for his, for his car? Because <laughs> I thought that looked really, really good. Well, that's the, first of all, thank you. And it's cool to you because... You and I grew up racing. You know, we grew up building yeah. our own cars. So you, you appreciate that because, you know, that was my very first paint scheme of my racing career, the red yep. and yellow. I kind of copied it off, all, off of Rusty. And then the owner, Sonny Wall, they, they own their own wrap company. And Sonny said, hey, look what we're doing for you. And I, I was like, oh, my gosh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> and then he said, send me some pictures from your cell phone, some of your favorite pictures. So I just started sending him pictures like we all would, and I showed up at the racetrack, and I just couldn't get over it. So the the, the hood you know, and the nose were all full of you know, pictures that meant a lot to me in, in my career. So, uh, yeah, it, it was just really fun, and I was caught off guard. Now, talking about you know, rules across the board as far as IMCA and you know, the crate motor, and, and they had the two-inch spoiler, and then they got rid of the two-inch spoiler – You know, the way I look at that deal is I have watched, especially Larry Phillips or Terry Phillips, um, Terry, and then, of course, at Notaboom. I watched a race from uh, Beatrice, I believe that's the way you say it. Yep. Just just the most incredible race, period, I think I've ever watched. They were three wide coming down the back straightaway to the checker, and I know you've all watched it, too. Yep. So – and I have a little bit more to say about this. You know, the point is this. It doesn't matter what kind of sport or what kind of motor you got. I'm a racer, and, and I've built these things. But as a fan, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for three wide coming to the checker, and that was an insane race with IMCA rules. Yes, yep. So one more thing, David. Th- that being said, IMCA and Brett Root, I give a, a, a lot of credit to because w- like when you have a child and you, and you say, let's wean the baby off of its bottle. Yeah. That, that's what they did with that spoiler. They said, okay, you know, let's run these crate motors. And if you run a crate motor, you can run a two inch spoiler. Well, a two inch spoiler caught everybody off guard because it was big. It was a big deal. 
And and now that everybody has the crate motors and we weaned everybody off the big motors, now they said, okay, we're done. Just get rid of the spoiler. And, yeah. and, and I think it was a brilliant move to convince everybody to buy these, you know, $6,000 crate motors. So good job to IMCA. It, and at the end of the day, it's about results of, like you said, putting on entertainment show. of the show, and they have done a really great job. Speaking of, now we're going to talk to Terry Phillips uh, is our next guest, but I know you um, have a, a, a great, great appreciation of what his dad had done for short track racing. What is something that maybe fans don't know about Terry uh, that he had learned from his dad or something that we could ask him? Well, the one thing I would ask him well, first of all, a hidden a hidden secret about Terry is he he loves basketball, loves his children. Uh, you know, now that now everybody's grown up real fast, but I mean, although Terry is a hardcore racer, he's got a great appreciation for his girls. Yeah. You know, and his wife, which I love. But but if you go back further, you know, the deal with with uh, you know his middle name is Gene Terry Gene Phillips because you know I'm 52 years old and you know I've was you know lived eat and, and bred, breathe racing with my brother Rusty. So I, I lived through Rusty, and with that came his legendary father, which was Larry Phillips. And Larry Phillips was our Dale Earnhardt. I mean, there was nobody bigger or better yep. than uh, than Larry Phillips. And uh, so, you know, me and Terry did, did a little bit of hanging out together, you know, in our in our trucks and trailers. And, uh, you know, we, we watched our heroes grow up my brother Rusty and his dad uh, Larry and and I, I'm just really impressed that that he lived up to his father's legend I, I think that's something pretty incredible that Terry has done I mean you know Terry is one of the best I yeah. mean he's getting of age now like me but you look through Terry's career he definitely lived up to his father's reputation he that's is, hard to do he one of the things when I think of Terry Phillips is uh, very hardcore, like you said, racer, but uh, a traditional short track racer. He can build, work, do whatever he wants, and he races, and he races people with respect still. And uh, that's something that I feel gets lost a little bit with some of the newer uh, up-and-coming drivers. And, and he, I feel, learned a lot of that from his dad. You know, his dad was uh, very respectful, respected by a lot of his peers, and, and we've seen that with him being nominated into the, uh, or, or coming up, uh, uh, for the NASCAR Hall of Fame, there. Yeah, Larry, Larry Phillips definitely deserves to be in the NASCAR Hall of Fame. I, yes. I've always said that if Richie Evans is going to be in the NASCAR Hall of Fame, then then Larry Phillips yeah. deserves it. You know, I've always said there's only two or three drivers back in the '60s and '70s that raced and literally made a living. Of course, it was hard, but yeah. you know, you look at Jerry Cook from the Northeast Mods. You look at Larry Phillips and, and Dick Trickle. Those three were very rare, and uh, literally the only money they had was what they made in that race car. Now, I know a lot of us are doing it now with sugar daddies. You know, you, you take a look at Bloomquist. He, he's got a little help now from, you know, Mark Martin's, you know, yeah. dealership, mm -hmm. things of that nature. But back in the day, there were no sugar daddies. There no, was no yeah. nobody helping you out, and they did it with no help. Yeah, they they slept into bread trucks and, and – uh, <laughs> would share one hotel room just so the whole crew could take a shower type. You know <laughs> what I'm talking right. about. Absolutely. We did it. Hey, so what um you're gonna go to uh, I cut my wife off here, but I know you're going up to the Thaw Brawl, correct? Up yep. at Yep. I know you're looking yep. forward to getting back into the, the mod and you've been doing all your race day stuff, which I think you've been doing yep. a wonderful job, but it's And cool. you're busy building a house in Saint Louis now. Yeah. Yes. And and my I'm place, real I know I know how excited you are about the St. Louis race coming up in the, is it in the Dome, is that correct? Yes, yes, you're right. You all bring up so much. First of all, uh, the, the Thaw Brawl. I'm looking forward to taking my Lefo car there and sort of, you know, th this Lefo car has been like an evolution. You know, I've started real slow with it, and I keep learning. I keep getting faster and faster. And I really feel like the Thaw Brawl is, the finale of my lethal car in other words i think i got everything i want the car feels really good now uh, and i did find that the last night at uh at volusia so david i am real excited to go to la salle only for that reason because i really feel like i i have what i need right now now you know the car is going to evolve as we go on you know whether it's aerodynamics or this or that and 
some of the things me and you talk about in private. But for right now, what I got, I think I'm I'm maxed out on what I know. Well, we and, got. Uh, we, I told Billy not to to go on because I want to hear about your moving dirt at the house and stuff. But uh, we yep. have a lot of tricks up our sleeve that we're working on. So and he's uh, told me them all. But I, I was. I'll just I'm say ready. this for the fans that uh, you know. Kenny has. I have a long list of uh, debt that that I charge to Kenny because he got me into this uh, dirt <laughs> racing. But Kenny forwards that on to Schrader, and and Schrader's kind of grew a little bit uh, from from Herman there. But uh, anyways, we get to go all over the country, and you were very very good the last night down there in Florida. But I seen this dozer moving around there in the St. Louis area, <laughs> and I was like, I. Of course, I love your vines because they just make my day when I get to see them. Uh, there's a lot of work going on there. Yeah. You know, I don't know what makes me do all that social network because, like, <laughs> like the me right now, the person you're talking to right now, I'm not yeah. in that mode. I think there, yeah. I know there's two of me. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's like I, I get excited and then I turn into this different person and then I do all those crazy things. And then there's that serious side of me, but I appreciate it. Yeah, the vines, the pictures. So, you know, in St. Louis, uh, the Midwest is known for basements. So we got this massive 12-foot hole, and uh, the the operator of the bulldozer right now, it, first of all, it's like 80 degrees in St. Louis. It's crazy nice. So I'm looking at it right now. I'm outside, and uh, we're building a 2,600-square-foot home. We're right-sizing. It's my objective to keep my money in my pocket, just have a nice little home. Uh, but I do got to give... Then this is for you, Ashley. Oh, boy. Uh, Kim, says, Kim says I have to have my swimming pool. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> well, and listen. a place for her to make her wreaths. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That'll be in the but basement. The pool's for <laughs> the grandkids that, that are going to be coming over. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So, um, you know, I told Billy and, and the dirt team, so, you know, the house is what I'm, look, I'm looking at it right now. Maybe a, not a, a football field away. So we have the house and we have the dirt shop. And I told Billy, I said, now listen, when we get into the summer and we're dirt racing, there might be a Tuesday or Wednesday that we're not running, you know, the Hell Tour or the Summer Nationals. And if you hear the music playing and you see me in my swimming trunks drinking a Bud Light and, and we're looking pretty good, that, that means you guys come on down to the pool too. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I, I'm, I'm known to enjoy myself. Uh, I, I can be all by myself. Well, I was... Music on, pair of shorts i was jealous because you had the uh, st louis fox crew over there at your shop and y'all were drinking beers in your shop and finding out videos and i was like man that looked like fun well you know uh it's funny because i i asked harvick uh yesterday last night i said harvick i know you're from bakersfield do you see yourself ever going home or are you forever gone he said well i'm forever gone because of all the reasons well mm-hmm. with me I'm, I'm, I was never forever gone from St. Louis. I love St. Louis. I'm back. I'm here. I will never leave Charlotte, North Carolina, you know, because I have so much in Charlotte. But yeah. but I realized that this is where I want my real home. And then, you know, we'll always be going back and forth to Charlotte. But, yeah, my real home is going to be right here. Well, Kenny, what does your dirt schedule look like? I mean, you've got work. You're building a house. You've got your radio yeah. show that you do as well. I mean, are you going to get to race maybe 20 times this year? Yeah. Good. Well, you know, here here's the honest to God's truth. If somebody came up to me and gave me $300,000 right now, I'd quit TV and I'd quit radio and I'd quit it all, and I'd just go dirt racing. Uh, the reality <laughs> of it is, though, is that's only a dream, and it's a dream for everybody. I've, yeah. I've shared that with other people, and, I, and I, when I said, hey, look, if somebody gave me three hundred grand, i would go dirt racing. And, and they said, yeah, doesn't everybody want to do that, Herm? So, you know, the thing of it is, is, is I put a deal in place with Daniel Norwood in Sirius XM Radio. I, I said, I, am, I like the radio. I want to do it. But, number one, don't threaten me because they do that in TV, and the radio's fun. So don't, don't threaten me. That, that's not going to work with me. I'll, I'll just quit if you do that. And the other thing is, is that uh, I'm going to run my dirt car. And that's all there is to it. Now, I have a lot of respect for Sirius XM Radio, but they've got to let me race my dirt car. And <laughs> I will never abuse them, and they'll never take off more than one Monday at a time. Ashley, we'll be carrying that black case 
uh, around with us, and we'll plug into routers at some of these hotels and things of these these natures. Uh, but I'm going to run that dirt car, you know, 50 something times this year, awesome. and that's just the way it's going to be uh, because I love it, and I'm not going to. I only have about seven years left in my career, and um, oh, you I'm going to get it while I can. Look at uh, what who, is it? Who um, put that number on the yeah. figure? I think I just thought of Billy Moyer. Oh. Uh, he's 57. Herman, I'm you, 52. Yep. you you write your own uh, destiny, uh, destiny, and and your own uh, how do I want to say where people you know I sit here and I'm thinking about your career in ASA and then crew chief and then working as a pit crew guy and then in the, the what was the Bush series and you've wrote your own you know you're talking about Larry Phillips and them and you've wrote a, a quite a career too and it's not over you've just started a whole new chapter with this dirt race and uh, deal here. Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, I think my biggest fear is looking back on my life. You know, I'm, I think when you get to a certain age, you think of your own mortality. You know, yeah. I heard somebody interviewing Brad Pitt, you know, the, the, the movie actor, out of Springfield, Missouri, by the way. Oh, wow. And, and I think it, it might have been on TMZ or one of those deals, and they said, Brad, you're 50 years old now. And I thought his, I thought his answer was pretty cool. He said, yeah makes me think of my own mortality. You know, you start getting older. Yeah. And, man, I just do not want to be that guy to get 70 years old and go, man, all I did was work my whole life. I never did anything yep. I enjoyed. I agree. And, I respect that. You know, I just I just cannot, cannot, you know, uh, hey, work my whole life. You speaking know, of that, a, a, a guy we know, uh, Illinois Modified Driver, Stephen Brooks, is trying to get a, a, a fellow racer of yours, and you know more about him. And I kind of want to bring this up when you talk about this. A, a guy racing and loves what he does. Seeing him in Florida was Mike Hammerly. Yeah. Is that correct? Is that yep. correct how you say his name? Yep. No, you said it right. So yep. Mike they're trying to get him into the Hall of Fame. Uh, yeah. Tweeting hashtag and and all this stuff. But this guy's a hardcore racer. Like he he I seen him down there in Volusia. He's gone. I don't know. Every year I've been there, I've seen. <laughs> but tell a little bit about him because you know more about him than uh, than I do. Yeah, Mike Hammerly is another – let me see. I'll explain the way I know. Mike Hammerly was one of the winningest race car drivers, dirt racers, in the Midwest, won hundreds and hundreds of races. Mm -hmm. And Mike Hammerly was another, another uh, Larry Phillips. Yeah. He was incredibly good, and he won a lot of races. Now, his only downfall in life, is that he loves dirt racing so much that now in his older days, he doesn't run good. And when you watch him now, you're like, that guy's a joke. Get him off the track. Yeah. But Mike Hammerly is my hero. I, he loves racing so much. He comes to Speed Week, and he drinks beer, and, he, and he's part of, of this, this camaraderie, this group we have. You know, mm -hmm. And when I say this group we have, it's, it's you, the listeners, listening to this show right now. We cannot judge people at the end of their career. No. And Mike Hammerly should never be judged at the end of his career. He was great. He's one of the greatest of all time. But, he, he, you know, he's like any local racer. He was great around the Midwest, Missouri, Illinois. Yeah. So uh, it's one of those deals where you have to educate people because they don't know. But he was great. Well, and that, and, that, and that's what is great about your perspective of him because I, I know you've told me that story and like this year we were in Florida and my dad goes, Hey, is that guy up there with that green ramp over truck? You know? And I'm like, yeah, 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 that's Mike, you know? And, and he was, he was so, uh, as he read about him, you know, he's got his cowboy boots and all this stuff, but, uh, he has raced a lot and a lot of people, like you said, maybe they, they have a different perspective of him because they haven't seen him in his prime. But I think it's great because so many racers there, whether it's a Jared Landers or whoever, they say hi to him. They all have a lot of respect for him, the racers do, and I, I feel that's really big. But I just wanted to touch on that a little bit because it's it's a big thing up there in the, the St. Louis area. Stephen Brooks is pushing really hard for him to get into Hall of Fame, and hopefully they can they can get him in there because of, uh, you know, what he's been able to do. Let me, let me say one last thing that, that'll help here. He, he he does everything, and I mean everything himself. If you look at Mike Hammerly's hands, yeah, they just look like vice grip hands. And, <laughs> and he, he, yeah, he designed his own house, right? Yeah. So he made the concrete so thick that 
his race cars are in the bottom of his house. So basements are everything here in Missouri. Yeah. So his shop, his shop is the basement of his home. But you can literally fire the race car motors up in his basement, and upstairs you don't you you just hear something quaint, very <laughs> small. But but th- this man is his own man. Wow. He designs his own things, and he and he, he does everything on his own, and that's what's incredible about him. Well, that is cool. That sounds like something your dad would do with the concrete yep. making that thick. <laughs> but it's uh that is that is really awesome, and uh, it, 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 again his. Uh, his his image and that probably isn't what it used to be to a lot of fans, but I know the racers still appreciate him coming to the racetrack and doing stuff for sure. Yeah, it's wrong to put anybody in the Hall of Fame on what they're doing right now, and yeah, you know, and I, I and I don't agree with the way the NASCAR Hall of Fame did it. They they put in drivers that were famous right now. Yeah, and I, mm-hmm. but I do. I told Schrader, I said, you know, they're doing that the way they got to do it to make it famous. I get it, but. Any Hall of Fame is never about who's hot right now. You you have to go back, you know, to, to the history. see who deserves to be in a Hall of Fame. Now, now we're catching up at the NASCAR Hall of Fame, and we're putting drivers in that me and you know of in Ashley. Yes. Mm-hmm. But yeah. the normal people nowadays, they don't know who the hell these drivers are they're putting in, but they deserve to have been in way before anybody else. No, Absolutely. I agree. I mean, there's and there's there's so many people that – can be put into the Hall of Fame, uh, whether it's NASCAR or dirt track racing. I, I, I just look at the more I'm around dirt racing, um, it's very interesting at how many would cross over from asphalt that, that had done the dirt. You know, like I think of Larry Phillips, and I think about all them weekly championships he had won, and, and I would think of I-70 Speedway and different asphalt tracks, and I'm like, man, this is a whole guy that, that ran so much dirt also. And you see that with a lot of racers, and that's something that um, is really neat when you when you look at those guys. Yeah, and the only reason Larry Phillips ran dirt and asphalt is because he had to make a living. Yeah, I mean, I know yeah. that about Larry. I've talked to him about it. You know, it's like, Larry, why are you going to run dirt this year? Well, because they changed the track from asphalt to dirt, and i got to make a living. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, he, Larry never done anything for ego, and, and Larry Phillips often told me, Herman, you know, I just don't have what you and Rusty or Mark had. I, he's, I don't have, I, I'm not tolerant of people. People aggravate me. You know, I don't have time for people. I'm busy making a living, working on race cars. So, you know, the only reason Larry Phillips never made it, you know, to NASCAR because he chose not to. He was too busy and he didn't, he didn't want to kiss butt, you know. And, yeah. um, but he's definitely a hero and he, he raced what he had to race to make a living. And, the, and, and we're going to, cut to a break here for a minute but when you hit on that there are so many short track racers i think of that they they just they they couldn't cut through you know listening to all the bullshit or different things that people right. uh, would go through and they're just like they're hardcore racers they're like hey look this is what i am if you don't like me but also the fans would really uh compared to i feel nowadays with drivers they could really relate with those guys you know they were they were like man like you talked about his vice grip hands, you know, they're like, man, that guy can work and build stuff, you know. And and you looked at that, whether it was a Joe Shear or Mike Miller or a, any of those guys that run uh, short track racing, you could relate with through their personalities. And I think that's a, a big thing, um, you know, and, and you show it very well through your vines. People walk up to you and they don't even <laughs> know you just through your Twitter. And, and it's great, though, that, that they can definitely see your personality. Well, you know, I mean, first of all, I appreciate that a lot. But, you know, I mean... Look, I've got great admiration for Sammy Swindell, slamming Sammy, right? Yeah. But, you know, listen, Sammy is like Larry Phillips. You, you, you know, you don't talk to Sammy. He, he doesn't have a personality, and if he does, you got to listen close. But what's crazy <laughs> about Sammy is his wife is beautiful and wonderful and will talk to you like right now. Yeah. So they say opposites attract, right? Well, I mean, Sammy Swindell is probably – you probably don't want to – well, first of all, I know people don't hold conversations with Sammy Swindell. Uh, so, you know, Sammy was never right for NASCAR because in NASCAR, you know, you have to kiss butt. You have to take care yeah. of your sponsors. And Sammy has done a, Sammy Swindell has done a wonderful job with his, his sugar daddies. You know, he's got yeah. the trucking companies and things of that nature. You see him show up at the Chili Bowl and his stuff is beautiful and pristine. Sammy Swindell is the ultimate racer. He's a hardcore racer. It's race car, race car, family, nice home. Uh, 
but you know he was never going to be NASCAR because he did not want to kiss so much ass and be polite to everybody. You know, yeah. you don't have time for that stuff. And so, but it doesn't mean he's bad. You and, know, he's a great, great man. And it's something as we cut to break. Um, he doesn't know anything else. You, I mean, you told yeah, me that. Right. When you look at some of these racers, they know nothing else. That's all they know how to right. do. Absolutely. So it, it is, uh, it's very hard to walk away or do something different. Um, but anyways, Kenny, well, thank you. We enjoy your yes. view and your perspective and always bringing in the history of how this sport evolved over the years. And your family was a large part of that as well. And we always enjoy having you on the show. Well, I enjoy you guys. I love you to death. I, I really like what you've accomplished. you You've shocked me. I told everybody. I said, Strummy used to call me up and tell me what to do to my dirt car. And I, I told David Strummy, I said, Strummy, why don't you build these damn things? And I said, by <laughs> God, he did. And he's better than me now. And I've enjoyed uh-huh. watching uh, you, Ashley. You, you're a beautiful lady. you got a little bit of tomboy in you. And you're right in there with him. And I just admire that about you. Well, thank uh, you. Makes me happy how you're all in with David. And uh, you guys just keep doing what you're doing. And, and one last thing. I know you're getting ready to throw me off. Uh, I want I want to say thank you to my crew chief, Billy the Kid Smith and and Toby Mathis. They're uh, they're all in for me on this dirt racing, and I'll be racing with Billy, probably for like maybe the second time at uh, on April second. I'm gonna yeah. go to uh, Farmington, Missouri, and I'm gonna go to Billy's backyard. And what, uh, what's the and uh, just, what's the uh, bet between you two? on that? Because Billy's reigning track champion, and here you're going well, in his backyard. I just got to know. Bill, we're, yeah, Billy's got a lot of pressure on him right now because <laughs> uh, because he's run he's run about four hundred races there, and he has to outrun me because he's great. So, but you're the boss uh, at the end of the day. So, <laughs> <laughs> now, you know that you know that was all fun right there. You know, everybody everybody gives me a lot of credit for learning how to run dirt and being okay at it. But when I go to Farmington uh, at St. Francis County Raceway on April second. All, all, the, the person that should be nervous is Billy because Billy has to beat me. Listen, I've been here four times. If, if I outrun him, that's going to make him look pretty damn bad. Oh, all right. It. Thank you, Kenny. <laughs> we have to pay our bills. <laughs> he's, he's listening. He's, 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 he's tweeting. He's on his phone right now. He comes flying out of the garage just now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Billy. <laughs> all right. Thanks a lot, We Kenny. appreciate you, Kenny. Okay. Bye, guys. Thanks. We could talk well, forever. Ever. Hours. Well, we probably, I know when you disappear at the racetrack and Kenny's at that racetrack, yeah, I, I know, know where you're at. There's no questions we asked. And three hours later, he's still not back. So I, I always know where you're at. Between the two of you, I'm not so sure how I can get a word in. But yeah, I love it. Love it. Anyhow, we have Anthony Prego joining us next here on Sling and Dirt on MRM presented by Hercules Tires. Sling and Dirt returns in one minute on MRN.com. Whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules Tires will get you there. Whether you're running on dirt or running a job. Our dependable, high-quality tires are the perfect fit for your needs. For unmatched value, selection, and warranty with industry-leading road hazard protection, there's only one choice. Hercules Tires. To learn more, visit HerculesTire.com or call 800-677-9535. Hercules Tires, right on our strength. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Eventually, it's going to happen. You'll turn the key and your engine won't start. Don't lose your ability to get around. Visit O'Reilly Auto Parts for a super start battery. Whether it's a reliable economy, hardworking premium, or powerful extreme, you'll find it at an everyday low price. Don't let a dead battery slow you down. Visit O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Motor Racing Network, glad to have you aboard for our coverage of practice, something we will be doing all throughout the year. They are pretty close in practice. You said you learned a lot in practice. We can have a good, clean practice. How many teams are going to opt out of practice? Get this practice session underway. As we close out practice. What are we talking about? Practice? We're talking about practice, man. We are talking practice. Sprint Cup Series practice on the Motor Racing Network. Join us all season long on MRN.com and the MRN app. This is Slingin' Dirt on MRN.com. Now back to Ashley and David Stremme. 
Welcome back. We're the Stremmies, and you're listening to Sling and Dirt, presented by Hercules Tires. Joining us now, he won the biggest win of his career at Georgetown Raceway this weekend. It is Anthony Prego. Welcome to the show, Anthony. Thanks for having me. So a pretty awesome showing, uh, very strong this weekend. You had terrible pill draws. I believe you started last in the heat, came and won it, and then you started eighth or ninth in the feature and ended up picking up the win. Yeah, definitely. We had a good race car in, uh, in the heat race. So we picked the worst number there was in Paul and uh, put us last in the heat and uh, just put our head down and went to work. And we definitely had a real good car in the heat race. We ended up winning the heat. Um, we got kind of lucky if you guys uh, went off the racetrack and uh, we got by them, but uh, we definitely uh, had a good car in the heat. That's a, and you not only had a good car, you beat some really, really strong competitors there. Uh, you got to feel really, really good about that here at the beginning of the year. Yeah, most definitely. You know, uh, put in a lot of work over the winter. Uh, kind of struggled last year. Uh, came off a real good season my first year racing modified, but kind of struggled a little bit last year. So, uh, did a lot, a lot of work in the shop this winter, and definitely paid off. What, what made you? When you talk about last year was your first year in modified. What made you go to modifieds instead of like a late model or something else? Um, I was racing sportsman down our way here, and uh, I got an opportunity to drive for Gary Mann, and uh, worked out very well ever since. Well, you finished second in the South Points, fifth in the North Points in the Short Track Super Series. Are are we going for a championship this year, or is there a different direction you're going? Yeah, most definitely. We're going to stick to the North and South for Brett Dayo's races. Uh, there's a few other series that we're also running. But uh, last year, uh, you know, we had a pretty good year in the points, and uh, I think we can definitely improve on it this year. Well, I'm glad you mentioned Brett Deo. Um, Georgetown, this is the first time they've been back to Georgetown in, in a few years, and I know that Brett is hosting a handful of races there this year. How was it to, you know, see Georgetown after they've taken so long off and to be the first race back there? Oh, we were there uh, last September, you know, and uh, Brett's definitely put a lot of hard work into it. Um, beautiful facility. You know, the racetrack was pretty good for early on in the year, and, uh, you know, I'm pretty happy for him to have a successful event. What, when you talk about uh, racetracks and places to go, what is your favorite place that you love to roll into? Um, there's a little short track right by us in Accord, uh, that's where I grew up racing, and uh, we have a lot of success there, so definitely love the place. That is cool. Well, this this race this weekend was a big block versus small block race, and I know how you feel about them, David. <laughs> but, um, Anthony, I want your perspective. A, a lot of tracks are doing this where you can choose to bring your small block or your, or your big block to race, and I believe you were in a big block this weekend. Is it really track specific when when you choose which car you're gonna run at, at that specific race? Yeah, most definitely. Uh, last year uh, we had a little trouble with our big block engine, so uh, we had to bring our small block down to that event last year. And uh, when I got there, I was like, man, we should have brought our big block. You know, the track looks real good. It's gonna have a lot of grip tonight. So um, this time we brought our big block, and uh, you know, for, for practice on Friday night. I was like, man, maybe we should unload this small block, but we uh, we kept to our big block, and it uh, really paid off for us. What uh, when you talk about the two different types of engines, uh, is there a difference in weight weight brakes or uh, any other, or is it just like everybody weighs the same, or they got to run the same tires? Is it, what what is the choice there between them? Well, you're all on the same tire. It's all American Racer tire. It's a uh, 44, 48 compound or harder. So the tire choice definitely comes into play there. But uh, the small block weight would be 2,400 pounds, and your big block weighs 2,500. Okay. And and obviously the big block cars probably put out more torque and power. Yeah, most definitely. You probably have an extra 160, 200 horse on, oh, on the small block. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. That's a pretty big difference there. <laughs> <laughs> I was curious because I've always, I go, man, you know, first thing I think of is weight. I'm like, how in the heck them small block cars <laughs> You know, some of the places it, it, it's a no-brainer, but um, it is very interesting, uh, you know, to see the difference or hear the difference from you and uh, how they do it. How about um, later this year? Are you going to go up and run maybe uh, uh, some of the stuff during Syracuse week? Yeah, um, 
you know, Syracuse there, uh, they just uh, tore it down, so I'm not too sure. You know, I don't think they're too sure where they're going to have Syracuse this year, but um, we're definitely, uh, you know, looking forward to the end of the year, especially after the start here. Um, hopefully they figure out where we're going so we can get something together. And the only reason I ask that, because I think the mile was like the Daytona 500 for the big block cars, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and I know a lot of guys look forward to that time of the year, so... It will be interesting to see what uh, what happens with it up there. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, Syracuse, you know, I've been there a handful of times, and it's it's definitely a pretty neat place to see the atmosphere and everything that happens there. So it's going to be a lot different this year, not, not uh, you know, when October rolls around and everyone's not getting ready for Syracuse. Yep. Are you going to choose to run some Super Dirt Car Series races this year, or are you going to stick with the STSS? Um, we picked a handful of uh, Super Dirt Car Series races out. Um, it's definitely good to go race the big block more than a few times a year. You know, we don't uh, race it so much around home, so uh, it's definitely good to get get on the road. And uh, you know, it definitely makes you a better small block driver when you get in the car with more horsepower. Yeah, I'd say so. Hey, who's uh, your biggest rival? That's what I'd like to know. The guy that biggest you... rival. Biggest rival when you go on a racetrack. <laughs> Love him or hate him? I, I would have to say Brett Hearn. You know, he's he's the best in our business. And uh, mm-hmm. when you when you get to race with him, you know, it, it definitely uh, makes you feel good about yourself because you're going to battle it out with him. Well, that's 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 uh, that's a wise uh, choice. He's he's definitely one to follow in his footsteps for sure. Anthony, where did you get your start in racing? Is is it something that your family did? Yeah, my dad uh, raced for a handful of years, and, uh, you know, I was always at the races with him, giving him a hand when I was little. Um, he ended up getting me a slingshot. Um, they're made by Tobias, so I started out in that, and uh, we worked our way right up to the, their car modifieds, which we had a sportsman motor in it then. Awesome. So do you do any indoor racing since you said slingshot there? Yeah, um, I haven't uh, in the past few years, but... Uh, in years past, I've raced Atlantic City. Uh, we went to the Rumble in Fort Wayne. Awesome. Cool. Well, that's uh, interesting. I know them indoor races are, I don't know how they do it anymore because the fumes are so bad, but uh, they, they end up putting on a pretty good show. So I know they're getting ready to do a big big uh, big car race with, with UMP Modifieds and late models in St. Louis area. So it's only a matter of time because that area, the Jersey area, I call it, that's more known for the indoor race. And you think they'll ever try to put big block cars in in a dome or anything? Oh, yeah, I'm not too sure if there's a place as big as uh, what you're talking about, but it would be- definitely be a neat deal. I seen uh, seen what you're talking about on uh, Dirt on Dirt. Yeah, and I was thinking about uh, taking a trip out to watch that. It should be pretty neat. That I, I'm I'm with you. I think I'm gonna watch it. They <laughs> they actually called said, "Hey, you want to participate?" I'm like, "I'm gonna watch because I want to see what this is gonna be like." But I think it's gonna be a a really cool event. So, again, thank you for having uh for for being on the show here and uh, having us be able to talk to you about your win and and look forward to seeing you and hearing about you the rest of the season. Thank you. I appreciate you guys having me on. Thanks. Thank no you. problem. The Mexican Missile. I love it. Anthony I like that name. Brego. Yeah. I wasn't sure how to say his name. Hopefully, I didn't butcher. I it still too can't bad. believe they're racing <laughs> up there. The weather's been kind of crazy. But um, welcome to New York. Yeah. Anyway, so but um, right. the indoor racing. We talked about that St. Louis mm-hmm. race. I know Kenny is. He's is, so stoked about that race. But not only him. Uh, our guest next week, Bobby Pierce, is very excited about that. Oh, which is he, he runs, running in it too? He he's going to run in it. Um, he's uh, uh talked or I've just been following on Twitter and that, but. He has always run very well at what I call Macon Speedway uh, in Illinois. Macon's a very, little, very small little, little place. place. Yeah, so uh, a lot of those guys are, are going to be fun to watch uh, come December time, but uh, it'll be interesting to hear Bobby's perspective next week. Well, I just, when I think about that, I instantly think of um, Indy when they did the indoor race this year and how it uh, that was a little different. didn't Maybe. go over so well. But when I hear indoor racing, like that's the first thing I think, and then you put such large body cars in such a yeah, small but, uh, little area, I don't know. When I you just... look at, and there's some YouTube video of this, uh, the Pontiac Silverdome, they had an ASA race in there. They really? had a race in there. Yeah, they've had it in different venues. You're talking about a much larger facility, mm-hmm. and with the St. Louis Rams leaving, 
uh, what else are you going to do with the stadium? So maybe there's something there where they'll have some racing weekly. through the winter. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, maybe not know. weekly. <laughs> but uh, anyways, next or this coming weekend, we have Lucas Oil back, which is going to be great. They're at the Atomic Speedway mm-hmm. on, on and Friday. And Brownstown. Yes, and Brownstown. Absolutely. So I was, uh, man, I wanted to go to Atomic on Friday, but I just can't make it. So Absolutely. Well, we have to pay some bills, so we're going to step away. But you're listening to Sling and Dirt here on MRN, presented by Hercules Tires. Sling and Dirt returns in one minute on MRN.com. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. If your vehicle isn't stopping like it used to, visit O'Reilly Auto Parts for the Spring Break Deals event. Take advantage of O'Reilly's Do It Right rebate and get a $20 O'Reilly gift card by mail when you buy a set of Brake Best Select pads and a pair of rotors. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. Luke Bryant. Yeah, that's my kind of night. Jason Aldean. So much more. Get ready for the first ever Country 500. The Great American Music Fest at Daytona International Speedway. Plus Little Big Town, Lee Bryce, Tyler Farr, Trey Atkins, and more, more, more. Memorial Day weekend, May 27th, 28th, and 29th. Three awesome days and nights on the infield of the World Center of Racing. Stay in the campgrounds inside the festival. For tickets and information, visit country500.com. Don't miss Luke Bryan, Jason Aldean, Florida Georgia Live. Kid Rock, Lady Antebellum, and many more at the Country 500 at Daytona International Speedway. Sponsored in part by Budweiser. This is Slingin' Dirt on MRN.com. Now back to Ashley and David Stremme. Welcome back to Sling and Dirt, presented by Hercules Tires. We're the Stremmies, and we're so glad that you joined us today. We were talking about the Lucas Oil Series coming back finally after Florida. They're at Atomic and Brownstown this weekend. We have the Clash at Lancaster Speedway. Good egg salad sandwiches there, right? Is yeah. that the racetrack? Yes. What I are do. you giggling about? Just you. Oh, okay. Well, the Ultimate Series and the Southeastern Modified Series are at County Line this weekend. Yep. And I believe I need to double check. And my when you're schedule. there, make sure you get your County Line aid. Oh my God, they're amazing. really, really good. Yes, it's the best lemonade you'll ever have in your entire life. It is that. Uh, the Spring Fling is the 18th. Is that this weekend? I don't even know what today is. It is. So yeah. USMTS is does have their 11th annual Spring, Spring Fling, Fling at Humboldt this weekend. So the big, the King of America isn't for two weeks. Anyway. I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't looked that Anyways, far ahead the, into the schedule. Yeah, I mean the County Line uh, will definitely be a big race with the Ultimates. They said they've in uh, the Southeastern Modified Series. Uh, they said they've redone three and four. Um, maybe we'll go watch, but I, I don't. Right now we're still trying I'm to. I'm pretty sure we're pretty busy. Yeah, I mean uh, that's why I'd love to go race it, but we just don't have time. But also. You have a legendary hilltop in West Virginia starting up. There's so many mm-hmm. places that are getting ready to start. Race season is here. I know. I, I'm glad you're excited because <laughs> that means I get to go race. Just remember because in like September, happen, folks, October, I need a vacation. Don't no, forget about that no. because as the year goes it on, hits. race season is not so as exciting. It hits July and she's like, Ugh, oh, you're crazy. Going. It is Anyways, not July. It's about the first hey, week in October. We want to apologize. <laughs> we didn't have Terry Phillips on. He We couldn't get a hold of him, but... Uh, I know um, he's probably working on his car. We, you heard Kenny talk about it. He is a true uh, hardcore racer. We want to get him back on the show um, because he is he's really, really interesting to talk to, and um, he's he's had a lot of success. So Apparently we're not it important is, enough. No, but it, it is hard. <laughs> Absolutely. Look, I mean, I got, as soon as we're done here, I got to go back to work. So we got some stuff we got to get done. A lot of these guys uh, are, are working on their stuff, so. That is what you do, and it's the just the start of the race season, so I hopefully wonder, there's not too much tore-up stuff yeah. yet. To, I to wonder how many World Outlaw guys, um, like maybe Shane Clanton, Josh Richards, and then will go to Atomic or some you of these know, places. I was su- I'm glad you just brought that up. I was surprised to see and Shane Clanton at Dixie and not at Tennessee this well, weekend, even though it is in his backyard. But I was going to say it's, it's in his backyard. Capital race cars are there. But you take um, 
you know, like Brownstown, uh, you know, Don O'Neill, that's, that's his home track. Are they going to go there? I was looking at this rundown, though, from uh, the, the Smoky Mountain. You had Mikey Marler, Daryl Lanigan, Dale McDowell, Jimmy Owens, Don O'Neill, Landers, Earl Pearson it's Jr. and his new Longhorn. Uh, yeah, a lot of guys went there. So. World of Outlaw, Lucas Oil. You never know late model race. where these guys are going to show up. That's exactly right. So it's going to be very It's racing. You can go anywhere in the world and race. I love it. Yes. Well, we appreciate you joining us today, and we hope to see you back next Tuesday. But until then, you can find Sling and Dirt in the Media Center at MRN.com, on MRN's YouTube channel, their app, and you can also find it in iTunes and on and Race Day National. Pictures. Yes, and tweet us your local. pictures, Sling and Dirt. We are the Strimmies. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. This has been Sling and Dirt with Ashley and David Strimmy. Listen every Tuesday at 11 Eastern on MRN.com for more news, interviews, and opinion from dirt tracks all over America. Sling and Dirt is a production of the Motor Racing Network. All rights reserved.